So hello, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, of course, I mean, uh, it is a real pleasure to, to be here with you today in this conference. Uh, my name is Margarita Delgado. I'm deputy governor in Banco de España. Um, this is the first time that uh, Banco de España uh, hosts the conference on diversity, equity and inclusion in economics, finance and central banking. Following the four previous editions organized by the Bank of Canada, the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System, the European Central Bank, and the Bank of England. As you all know, the conference primarily focuses on issues encountered by underrepresented groups in economics. We've learned a lot, I mean, in, in the last session, finance and central banking. Back in 2018, the first conference in London brought together 142 attendees. The papers and discussions explored the evidence base for gender discrimination, the benefits of increased diversity, the role of culture, and the approaches that can be used to improve gender diversity. In the following editions, the concept of uh, diversity enlarged to also account for other aspects such as race, ethnicity, or age. As of December 31st, 2023, 3,473 people made up the staff of Banco de España, out of which 52% are women and 48% are men. Only two decades uh, before, in, in 2003, the share of women was only 33%. This increase has been mainly due to the new hires, since more women have been joining Banco de España in recent years. However, and now it comes the however, there are still important uh, gender differences at the managerial positions. In 2023, the share of women was 40% for division heads and 23 among department directors, higher in the hierarchy, of course. Hence, there is still room for further improvement. Here at Banco de España, there has been in the most recent years a clear push in terms of promoting research, based evidence on the on research, sorry, research based evidence on the existence of gender differences in career progression. Following the seminar work done at the European Central Bank, our own researchers were granted access to the anonymized data of our employees to better understand the pay penalty to career interruptions and part-time arrangements, as well as differences in promotions. This access to granular data allows to better characterize the vast heterogeneity of positions in an institution as big and diverse as ours, both in terms of business areas as well as for different layers of the hierarchy. The intention is that this analysis serves as a guide for our own human resources actions. Organizing this conference is another initiative that reinforces Banco de España commitment to diversity and inclusion. I would like to thank our colleague Olympia Bover, who is sitting here, for the great job organizing in organizing this conference. Laura. And Laura Ospid, of course. <laughs> With the purpose of uh, fostering our knowledge, we invite you all to come here today. I hope you have enjoyed and learned from the presentations and discussions. Now it is my turn to give the floor to the organizers of the next edition, our colleagues from Ban de France, represented today by Olivier Garnier, Director General, Chief Economist of Statistics, Economics International. Once again, thank you very much for coming. Olivier, you have the floor. Thank you.
Thank you, Margareta. It's a pleasure to be here and to attend this uh, conference uh, in Madrid. And uh, congratulations to uh, Banco de España and all the teams which have prepared this uh, outstanding uh, conference. I could listen this afternoon and uh, part of this morning, and uh, I think it was uh, very uh, insightful. So uh, I would like to make a, a few uh, remarks uh, to highlight the, the multiple dimensions of diversity uh, relating to monetary policy. Uh, I see three key aspects of diversity. Who decides policy? Who informs the policy makers? And whom our policy de decisions impact? Each dimension holds important implications for the effectiveness, legitimacy, and inclusivity of our monetary policy frameworks. And some of these implications have become clearer over the past years thanks to research that you have done and more data availability on these questions. And indeed, uh, some of this evidence is based on works that has been presented today and also during the past editions of this conference. However, many other aspects are not yet fully understood, and I hope further research work will help us in the coming years to shed more light on them. So let me start with the first aspect, the diversity in who decides monetary policy. We know from research that diverse committees make better decisions. The very essence of monetary policy, the very essence of monetary policy committees is to pool knowledge and perspectives. Yes, yet, as we know, the composition of these committees is too homogeneous. Academics and financial markets often focus on the diversity in policy preference rather than in demographic characteristics. As you can see on this slide, there is the, the famous classification, ornithological classifications, dividing uh, committee members between hawks and doves. And uh, as you can see, if, you, if we look at this composition, then you could say there is diversity. But when you look in the details, you, you can see that uh, there are not that many uh, females within this uh, governing council. And uh, this is why maybe one day, as you know, Christine Lagarde, president of the ECB, said that she was neither a dove nor a hawk, but a whole. And uh, maybe it just to show that uh, this lack of uh, diversity. We are all aware uh, that, uh, uh, you know, we, we, we need also to extend uh, the, 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 all the, to all the facets of, the of uh, diversity, not only gender, but also race. And the most obvious evidence is that central banking at the top uh, remains a man's world. For instance, uh, since, the, uh, the is the, since the inception of the ECB, over 90% of decision makers in the governing council were males, and we are, all well, we are all aware of the small sample problem of this investigation. However, experimental work seems a promising avenue to fill this gap, and the first results are encouraging. Experimental findings suggest that who communicates monetary policy matters for macroeconomic expectations. As such, the diversity of committees encompassing varying gender and racial backgrounds can significantly influence macroeconomic expectations, particularly among underrepresented groups. Another underinvestigated aspect is that of diversity in terms of geographical, national, regional representation, as it is the case, uh, for instance, at the ECB governing council. In that case, maybe there is more diversity due to the structure of Europe uh, as opposed to gender diversity. What is the role of the regional dimension for policy? Does it enter in the traditional hawk and dove debate, or is it another dimension of policy preferences? What does this mean for central bank communication to the public? In this regard, national central bank governors in the Eurosystem play an important role 
as messengers as they speak in the local language and are attuned to respective national debates and preferences. Along this line, new research suggests that national identity can influence the effectiveness of central bank communication strategies as there exists an intragroup effect in the updating of expectations. Now I come to my second point, which is the uh, diversity of uh, in who informs the decision makers. Uh, the economics profession, which heavily influences research and policy making, suffers, as we know, a lack of diversity in terms of women, ethnic minority groups, and individuals from lower socioeconomic backgrounds. The problem is that homogeneity fosters groupthink, hindering innovative and inclusive policy making. It would be important to better understand what kind of perspectives, questions and answers are we missing due to this lack of heterogeneous representation. The ball is also on our side as central bankers. What should we do to increase diversity in who and what informs decision making? We know that investing in initiatives like internships, scholarships, mentorships or role models help to remove barriers hindering diverse voices from contributing to the policymaking process. Let me give you some numbers for uh, researchers at the Banque de France. And I will show you yeah, uh, a slide. Among the 44 researchers, in excluding managers in the research career path in my directorate general, 41% are women, so not that bad. But when you look at this chart, you see that the proportion of women declines significantly with seniority. For instance, uh, there is only one female among the two upper grade levels for researchers. So for sure, there is maybe a, a generation effect on this slide, and uh, I'm hoping that uh, this will improve over the coming years, but yet we, we need to do more to foster career for female researchers and broaden the pool of talent. We recently set up an internal group to diagnose any problems in the recruitment, progression, and retention of female researchers. This group gave us its recommendation a few weeks ago. This slide presents the main action points endorsed and the internal calendar to deliver on each of them, you know, from attractivity, uh, objectivity, visibility, and career, I will not detail. The last dimension, dimension I wanted to talk about is the diversity in the impact of monetary policy. While monetary policy primarily targets a single objective with limited tools, its effects transmit across a diverse spectrum of society. Using uh, the words of uh, Chair Powell, monetary policy tools are famously blunt tools. They are not capable of surgical precision. Nevertheless, there is increasing interest in knowing how our tools and decisions affect the diverse citizens we serve across different forms of heterogeneity. This knowledge benefits to our understanding of the monetary transmission mechanism, but also to preserving trust, credibility, and public support for central bank independence. Research in academia and in central banks has expanded in recent years to structural and empirical works able to account for different types of heterogeneity. On the structural side, what we call HANG models are increasingly used to study the effect of monetary policy, especially on inequality. We have various lessons from this literature, including that inflation differences across households or geographical space not only affect economic inequality, but also shape the optimal policy design. However, we cannot implement a monetary policy that fits to each category. This is an evidence. Are there less blunt tools or a mix and sequencing of tools that are more appropriate in this regard? 
This remains an open question for further research. Empirical works in recent years uh, has been equally important in making the face of diversity less abstract, especially with regard to inflation. We know more how inflation affects households along the dimension of income, wealth distribution, age, and distance to metropolitan areas, but also gender. Recent empirical studies have revealed the existence of persistent gender disparities in inflation expectations driven by entrenched societal norms. For instance, we know that women have persist persistently higher inflation expectations than men due to traditional gender roles in daily life and social conditioning rather than through differences in income, abilities, skills, or preferences. These facts are evident also in a recent Banque de France survey of French households, focusing on the experience of women with the inflation shocks of the past two years. A summary will be published tomorrow as a blog on the Banque de France website, co-authored by our Deputy Governor Agnès Benassi-Kéré. Evidence on this, side, on this slide showed that there is a significant gap in inflation perception and expectations between men and women. Uh, this survey also shows that this gap is especially high for food items, possibly linked to different day-to-day -day shopping experiences of men and women. In addition, women report more frequently than men, having adjusted their consumption decisions facing inflation, mainly for food, holidays, and clothing. Lastly, we face diversity in public knowledge about our objectives, our policies, our power, and limitations. Evidence showed that diversity among households on this knowledge depends on educa educational attainment, income, gender, desire to be informed, but also the channel of information used. We care because more informed households have more trust in central banks, which is crucial not only for the support of central bank legitimacy and independence, but also to steer their inflation expectations. In the last years, we have taken seriously communication with the public, with the, its strategy review, the ECB and the Eurosystem committed to explain monetary policy in more accessible terms, so that people can understand why decisions are taken and what that means for their daily life. Communication is a two-way street and as pioneered during the Eurosystem strategy review, we have been listening to our citizens as well. In this context, in 2021, the Banque de France initiated a two-way dialogue with French citizens to answer the questions they have about monetary policy and inflation. This dia dialogue continues at an annual frequency through the Rencontre de Politique Monétaire. For instance, in 2023, town halls in the 13 French regions have taken place. Let me finish. As you can see, since the first edition of this conference, economic research has made much progress in understanding the role of diversity, equity, and inclusion in the field of central banking. Nevertheless, there is still a need for further research in order to improve our knowledge and ultimately the way we decide, the way we implement and communicate monetary policy. This is why the Banque de France will be very pleased to host the sixth edition of this conference uh, so it will be in about 18 months, so the precise date is not yet decided, and we look forward to welcoming you in Paris next time. Thank you. Thank you very much.